We're witnessing a, a test case in a, in a war that's being waged against uh, Latin American immigrants in this country. A group like uh, the Minutemen have come together and behind the, behind the scenes helped to craft this anti-immigrant legislation. And I think a lot of local governments in Virginia and around the country are, are watching to see what happened. And a lot of immigrants and uh, people concerned with uh, immigrant justice and civil rights are watching to see what happens here as well. Part of me feels like we've been pulled away from our central mission on this. We've been pulled into the federal debate more than uh, more than I'm really comfortable with. You're, you're going to get some very negative financial news at your board retreat about next year. But I think that it would be very prudent for this board to defer any action until we have gotten those real numbers because we don't know today what we're facing. What I don't want to do is delay this uh, too significantly because I think that that would potentially kill the program. We've got a lot of momentum right now. Uh, we've been unified on this uh, so far. And if the board really does feel that they want to wait until after the board retreat to consider the fiscal implications uh, until the 16th, I think, I think that's fine. But I don't want to defer it after that because I think, you know, that is the last meeting of the month and we defer it after that and we're, you know, that, that's going to really slow us down and potentially kill the program. So. I was hoping to take two steps forward today, uh, but we took one and uh, we'll take the other step on October 16th. Why was the October 16th so important to you? Well, it was, it was important to some of the, well, it was important to them because it was after the 11th when we're going to have our board's fiscal retreat and we're going to look, we're going to see more of the details about our fiscal situation in the county. The 16th, the, the 16th, I think it's important that we vote on this. Uh, it's the last meeting in October. And frankly, you know, if we don't do it before the election, I think it's, uh, you just tend to lose momentum. I, I do know that we got four solid. And that's, uh, again, Covington, Mike May, uh, John Stirrup, and myself. Uh, so so you're, but the fifth vote you're is trying to see a, a civic rally, maybe not a public rally, but and so people come out and say, that they want this resolution. Yeah, we need as many people as possible to come out and support the board and, and support the resolution and support funding of it. It's important that the citizens get out here and show their support for the resolution um, because if they don't, uh, I, I, I'm not confident, as like I said before, I'm not confident that I've got enough votes on the board uh, to support uh, funding of a of, of John's mm -hmm. resolution. He sent out that mailer, spent $40,000 of, of county money, his discretionary funds, but it's still county money. And when the other supervisors spend money, they always get the approval at the end of the board meeting of who they're going to send the money to. Well, he didn't consult anybody. You had the chairman using county monies to send out a, a postcard that says, come let your voice be heard. There was no provision for a public hearing. It gave the impression there was a public hearing, but, but there was none scheduled. So people had to default to citizens' time, which is the first thing on the agenda. Citizens' time is intended to be a very short period of time for a few people to come up and state their concerns on a whole wide range of issues. It's not intended to take the place of a public hearing. Uh, many people uh, signed up to speak today and, and to make sure that everybody can speak and this and to move it along as quickly as possible uh, I'm going to limit the uh, each uh, uh, speech to one minute I'm going to start with Mr. Uh, Chairman yes Ms. I would Kagan. like to appeal the decision of the chair since you sent postcards out to everyone I think that they are entitled to have their three minutes This is a appeal to the chair to limit it to one minute, and uh, it's it's been seconded by Ms. Cadigan. Ms. Bark, you mean? Uh, Ms. Ms. Bark. Uh, if we could hear from the parliamentarian on uh, the vote necessary to overrule the uh, ruling of the chair. I believe the proper procedure is for the board to vote to overrule the chair. Is it a simple majority? I believe it's two thirds. I think it's a simple majority. Okay, this is the vote to overrule the decision of the chair to limit the speeches to one minute. Uh, please vote. The motion passes six in favor to oppose supervisors bar That was the right thing to do. Once people were there, even though there were a substantial number of people, I think the only fairness was to give them the same amount of time they would have had if there was a public hearing. The result was though that she had a 12 hour citizen's time, which is unheard of in this county. I in fact, I've never really heard of that uh, across the state. I urge you to exercise the virtues extolled in the Pledge of Allegiance. Liberty and justice for all. I would just like to say, and I mean this very sincerely, 
Don't ever forget 9-11 and who is responsible for 9-11 illegals. God bless America. That wasn't the Spanish people who did this to, Amer to America, people. It was people from other countries who did this to you guys or to all of, all of us, because not just white people or American people die. It was a lot of Spanish people died at 9-11. Let me say this about what seems to be a confusion in some people's minds. Don't confuse the 9-11 with the 7-11. <laughs> the people at the 7-11 had nothing to do with the attack on the Twin Towers on 9-11. The guys at the 7-11 just want to work. The people that attacked the Twin Towers were in this country legally. They did not sneak across the Mexican border. I'm hearing some funny things that are uh, puzzling to me because the 9-11 the, the, uh, the attackers were illegal. Let's make this a place people want to live, not move away from. And to the little thug that was over here this earlier saying, we'll take it to the streets, basically. Well, there might be two or three thousand of you outside, but there's a million more just like me. Bring it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Porque si bien han visto muchas manifestaciones anti-immigrantes aquí. Because you've seen a lot of um, anti-immigrant manifestations here. La mayoría de las personas que los eligen a ustedes no tienen el corazón tan malvado. Most people that have elected you don't have such a bad heart. This land is a place of immigrants. We, the immigrants, just come here to work. We have families in our countries. We don't have the possibility of a good life in our countries. <laughs> I want you to ana analyze what would this country do without immigrants. This economy would be ruined. I know it and you know it. Stop treating us like criminals because we are people that want to work. You're a criminal. Don't keep saying, I'm not a criminal, I'm not a criminal. You're a criminal. I will never hurt America. God bless America. Thank you.